Com meeting for Monday, June 12th. Um, first order of business, apologies, is uh, the approval of the meeting minutes from May 22nd, 2023. Everybody get a chance to read those. Motion to approve. Motion, MJ. Do I have a second? Second, Julie. <clears throat> Thank you, Julie. Eric. Aye. Julie. Aye. MJ. Aye. Rig. I don't know if Rig heard you. Josh, you cut out for a second. Hi. Thanks, Rick. Uh, Lee. Hi. Steve. I think Steve's on mute. Yeah. Um, Brian. Is there a vote that I, it said 7.30 on the invite, am I? Uh... Yep, we're just going through the uh, minutes from oh, last adopting them. Okay, yes, I. Okay, thank you, the motion was approved. Right, uh, the next order on the agenda is public comment. I don't see anybody from the public, but I don't wanna make assumptions either. Is there anybody that has public comments? Not hearing any. I uh, don't see anything under old business. So moving on to new business. First order is FY23060, which is the adoption of the five year capital improvement plan. So, Kimberly, I assume you're here to help walk us through some of this stuff. Um, you and Lori, I'm sure. I'm just, uh, is there anything on the capital improvement plan you can share with the, uh, the team here tonight? Um, so this is just a revised re um, rendition of the previous five-year capital plan. I think that went for the finance committee and the town council, I think at the beginning of 19. So this is just an updated version of all the departmental requests. Um, you know, you, you guys recently voted last meeting, I believe, on the orders um, for fiscal 23 that are part of this plan um, that are prioritized um, in a lengthy process with the, um, the management team and um, I guess that's it. Any questions? <laughs> <clears throat> no, and I, I just um, want to make sure that I'm clear with with um, with my understanding of this. Even with the voting of the five year plan, we still vote on the budget from year to year. Um, so if there was a shortfall or anything or a change in you know something like COVID as an example, um, we would have to vote on 24 separately, 25 separately, 26, et cetera, et cetera. Um, yeah. This, this is a snapshot in time at, for planning purposes more than it is yes. an approval of a budget. Perfect. Correct. And we'll open Thank it up you. to the committee to see if they have any questions on the five-year plan. So I have a question. Um, were, were there any items that we didn't get to that I wasn't at the last meeting because I was traveling. Um, if someone could just maybe fill me on on maybe a couple of things that might have gotten pushed out that previously were supposed to be done, like maybe during COVID that we might have put into this plan or things that are not going to be done. Like, was there anything taken out? Does anyone know or recall, or was there anything added? Well, you know, the only that things that got pushed that out because of COVID. I apologize for not being at the last meeting. Um, it, 
through the you the chairman i just would like to um just say that if anything was taken out of the plant well it would never be taken out it, it would have if we had different financing sources like from some of the covid or the cares funds that would have you know been used instead of um, spending the town's money but that all was incorporated into this plan and you know if they replace computers or you know for example it equipment that may have been in the, the town's plan that wasn't yet budgeted that we were able to use cares and um COVID-19 funding that we we did do that but that is all incorporated in into the so shows that it was done plan. just that we didn't fund it is that okay Thank yeah you. well it, it does show that it was funded by another source which means right. you know other financing sources so thank you you're welcome <clears throat> all right i'm good any other questions on the five-year plan i have a quick question mr chair yeah, absolutely Andrea. um laurie uh or kim um Either of you could answer this for me. Does the revised plan actually include anything for the memorial building? There's any other types of um, upgrade costs for the buildings over the next couple of years? Um, yeah, sure. There, there's going to be, you know, whether it's um, IT equipment, but I mean, right now it's it's all pretty new, so you know, you won't probably see any new newly um, asked for equipment or, or things unless it wasn't in the original plan for the you know, for the renovation of the building um i don't know is that what you're asking yeah i was i was kind of trying to start anticipating you know any type of need for the building i know i know we're probably getting ready to start planning for things for the academy building with it having been you know brought back into service for the last seven years now um my I'm trying to look ahead a little bit more to see if there's anything we might need for needs for the memorial building, because I know we're getting to that point where we need to start thinking about what are going to be some of the needs for the academy building, because uh, honestly the building does need a little bit of a coat of paint. At mm -hmm. some point it, it needs to be a little, you know, a little bit of a scraping here a little bit of repainting I know we still have, you know, the paint colors from the list when we did the project or Michael or Kim probably have that somewhere stored in the building project materials, but I want us to try to start thinking ahead for the memorial building too, because mm -hmm. now that we have that fixed and fully renovated, I want us to be able to focus on that as being part of the plan going forward and not be an afterthought. So if that's something that, you know, you, Tony and Kim and Michael are looking at, um, it would be nice to know that. Um, yes, um, Michael, I'm MJ. Um, so yeah, we are, going through each building actually and making sure that we're preparing and we're you know rolling all of that into the planning of the capital so that we are proactive rather than reactive for new furnaces new hvacs new you know keeping everything up and and um you know maintenance and and that's certainly been a different um or better planning for us so that's why we're we're really happy with the planning of this plan And uh, uh, just a quick follow-up question, Mr. Chairman, if uh, if you'll indulge me, uh, just because it's been a while since I've seen a capital plan. Um, uh, for uh, overall trending, as you know, when I was here, we were adding on DPW vehicles and police vehicles to be part of the capital improvement plan. Uh, how well have we been sticking with including vehicles in replacement cycles in the plan now? I know that was something Tony was very big on trying to get through um, when we first started visioning the idea of a capital improvement plan that was more robust. Um, have we been able to keep up with that? Um, yes, actually. So we do have a fleet. Um, there, I think there might be a fleet um, listing of all the town vehicles. So we, we have them all in, you know, for replacement. So when a new vehicle comes on and, and another one, you know, comes off, we're uh, constantly updating and trying to keep everything, you know, working for the town. We, you know, we've got the plows over the last few years. So the DPW has been able to do their work. And uh, so we've done a lot of work, you know, thanks to 
this committee and the budget and subcommittee and the town council in, in getting a, a lot of the equipment for the staff to actually, you know, take care of, of the town. So have, yeah, that's and, definitely but now. And just a just an additional. Sorry, Mr. Chairman, I don't want to take up everybody's too much time. But with it relates to the vehicle fleets, have we been able to utilize combines for a lot of the capital improvement stuff? Been able to purchase or procure for that? Have we been able to fully more utilize it? Because I know that was something that when I was there, I was helping you and Tony to further implement. Have we made that more efficient to include that in the capital plan to like encourage our purchases and our procurement through that to better better provide savings in our capital improvement plans? Absolutely. We're, you know, we all we we're diligent with the procurement and Combi's has all the state um vendors, so it's actually easier for the town to go through Combi's. So yeah, we we sure do. Excellent. No more questions, Mr. Chairman. I'll let I'll let everybody else come up with some questions. No, MJ, and I, I don't know if everybody got the material that Josh sent out. Uh, I hope they did. Um, but I, I think if if the team has some time to kind of go through that, there's a lot of information in here. Um, but you'll see that, that Tony and team was was super detailed with vehicles and what number of lease payments were going out for what and what year. Et cetera, et cetera, um, within within this document, um, there there's a, appears to be a lot of thought that went into when we'll need new police vehicles and fire trucks and and DPW equipment, et cetera, et cetera. And it's 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 pretty well outlined in in some of this material. So if if folks don't have that, I I want to just ask Josh to make sure that anybody that didn't receive that does receive it because I, I think it's uh, very informational and, and super detailed and helpful to, to help guide this conversation. So I hope everybody did get that. Any other questions on the five-year plan? Do I have any motions on the five-year plan? Motion to approve. Thank you, MJ. I'll okay. second that. Thanks, Lee. Eric. Aye. Julie. Aye. MJ. Aye. Rig. Aye. Lee. Aye. Steve. Aye. Brian. Aye. Thank you. The motion was approved. Excellent. Uh, the next order of business, and I apologize if I missed something, so so keep me honest, because uh, I'm trying to go through the document and uh, I'm not on the first page anymore, is order FY23061, which is the year-end transfers. I think, uh, I think most of you folks, some of you being new, so we'll, we'll, we'll let the team talk through this, but uh, every year we have to zero out certain accounts. Um, and that leads to the year-end transfer process that you'll see in front of you, um, basically saying where we're transferring the $412,000 and into what accounts they're coming from. So I'll pause there and see if Lori or Kimberly has anything to add um, on the year-end transfers. I don't know if Kim can talk yet, Mr. Chairman. Um, she's still having difficulties. But I can just briefly say that, um, you know, this is an annual um, process that we, um, you know, obviously we, we budget for the town's budget in the spring that we don't know how it's going to end up, you know, until like 12 to 14 months ahead of time. So we do our best to project. And um, during the year, there are situations and things that come up where we know we're going to have funding for certain um, availability and we can use it to, you know, help some overspent accounts. So this is like an annual process that every community is allowed to do to before they close the books. So I don't know if anyone has a particular question, but it, these are all pretty basic um, transfers. I do have a quick question, Laurie, uh, Mr. Chairman. <laughs> yep. Go ahead, MJ. Um, 
it, it's probably just going through the minutiae, but um, I'm kind of curious. Uh, the other items all look pretty self-explanatory with the amounts that they have. I'm kind of curious as to why there are small items, you know, small items that are like a dollar here and two dollars there. What's going on there? Was it rounding errors when it came to invoices or accounts um, being spent a certain way? Yeah, so when we imported the budget last year, we were just so efficient that we were rounding and um, some of them had more than a dollar and some were off a dollar. And we like our books nice and tidy and we don't like a minus a penny here or anything. So <laughs> we're trying to make it nice and tidy for a, for the end of year book. So it was definitely rounding. It was under 99 cents basically for most of them. So that's what that is. I applaud the effort, Laurie. I, as, as a person who likes to have my books clean when it comes to the end of the fiscal year on my collections, I'm definitely keen on that. So thank you for sharing that. <laughs> Thanks, MJ. Does anybody else have any questions on year-end transfers? I have a motion on the year-end transfers. Motion to approve. Second. Is that Rig? I'm That's missing. Rig. That's Rig. Eric. Aye. Julie. Julie, you're muted. MJ. Aye. Rig. Aye. Lee. Aye. Steve. Aye. Brian. Aye. Thank you. The motion was approved. Excellent. All right. The next order of business is FY23062, which is the high street treatment plant completion. Um, looks like we are voting to appropriate the transfer of $980,000 from the water retained earnings to the water capital project fund. Lori, I will need um, a little bit more. I, I drive by this project quite often, so I'm very familiar with the project, but if you could just talk through uh, the funding source and, and uh, help the team understand this one a little bit, that would be greatly appreciated. Um, sure thing. So as most of you are aware, this is coming down to the final, um, the, the final costs of the new treatment plan and, and the um, actual pay down and the closing out of the capital project fund, which means we've, um, we've used SRF money, meaning it's from the special revolving from from the Mass Clean Water Trust um, agency that we borrowed um, 14 million 053 that we were eligible for. The total cost of the project was just over 16 million, 2 million of it being um, the cost of the garage itself. The, the covered expenses out of the 14.053 or whatever um, was uh, for the construction and all of the um, you know, building of the actual treatment plant. So the final cost of this 980,000 is made up mostly out of change orders over the, the two to three years of the project, meaning things that the SRF um, didn't cover, um, you know, that weren't always foreseen. And there were a couple of increase, um, increases in, in the construction that wasn't covered for whatever reason or for whatever design. So this will um, make whole the capital project fund and we'll close out the um, the capital project fund for the water treatment plant. So. I don't know if that's helpful. I think it's helpful. Um, I, I have one question then I just uh, open it up to the team. So the 980,000, if I, if I heard you correctly, was for change orders and or overages to cover the remaining balance of the project, right? That we yes, basically. Mm -hmm. That we hadn't previously um, voted on in the past. Correct. 
I think okay. two years ago, we, we put about 2 million from the retained earnings in to cover um, the cost of some of the preliminary design work that wasn't covered. So, I mean, this project's been going on since 17. So it's been rather lengthy and, um, you know, in lieu of borrowing more money to cover the cost of the project, we are, are comfortable that the retained earnings can be taken out so that it would reduce, you know, any further um, cost to the town for borrowing another million dollars. Just yeah, to set, finalize set, set, another, set another way, if I understand it correctly, the revenues of the water department, water and sewer department will cover the additional misses. Right, right. The, the original debt now for, for this, this treatment plant will be covered by you know, the rates, the water um, revenue, and um, this 980, if we borrowed, we'd have to, you know, put that burden again on the revenue. Um, and we didn't want to do that. We thought we could cover it with the with the um, retained earnings. So just to close the project out. Fantastic. Mr. Chairman, I have a question, just a quick one. Absolutely, MJ. Uh, Laurie. Um, since we're going to be using 980,000 from water retained earnings, how much does that leave in the account for any other types of items that may come up with a water department or water division? Um, that's a good question. Let me just take a quick look. Um, so in the water retained earnings, is it's sort of like the general fund free cash. So last year we probably got we had about 2.9 million in free cash in the water um, retained earnings. So we're allowed to use that, um, you know, whatever was certified for free cash. And then of course the closing of the books for this year will determine another hopefully um, certification of additional free cash. So let me just get that amount for you. It was two dollars $2,032,958. So this will reduce it to $1 million. Um, And again, we're hoping with, you know, the, the closing of the books, we'll be replenishing that into the retained earnings okay. for fiscal 23. We don't by chance see anything um, just an additional question here. We don't foresee anything coming down the pipe for water department that we would need to use additional uh, retained earnings revenue, um, do we? Um, hopefully not. You know, we're we're you know keeping our fingers crossed this year. Well, I know they're already um, concerned with the water shortages and things like that. So, you know, we're we're hoping that we're we'll remain in good shape, and then the new treatment plan as it gets going um, is a good good thing for the town so there aren't any there aren't any upcoming repairs needed for the existing uh, treatment plant down off of um down off of Plymouth Street are there yeah or the Carver's Pond one they we just put I think 200,000 um to, to change the um filters that yeah, hadn't that been was, changed apparently so that, that was like was a couple media, weeks right? ago yeah yeah but other than that, those are the real big ones. Um, you know, we'll be coming before you probably in the fall with another revised um, water and sewer and transfer station capital plan because I don't think that's part of our capital plan in here. This is the general fund capital plan. So we do have that coming before you so you can see what, what's on the horizon in that respect. Looking forward to it. Thank you, Laurie. No more questions, Mr. Welcome. Chairman. I have a question. Um, so I'm just curious to know whatever's on the horizon. Do you anticipate that's going to increase the the water bill for for town residents? Well, the rate did already increase this past July. Right. So 
we don't foresee another increase until, you know, another major project comes along. Um, okay. So the rates that were just increased were enough to cover the current debt of the Water Enterprise Fund plus this new um, water treatment plant. So that's why the, the rates had to be increased for that. Right. But the likelihood of another increase in a short period of time, you guys are not anticipating that in the very near future, given that, you know, we're going to be revisiting this in the fall. Yeah, well, we'll we're revisiting cap the new capital things there. They want to do a master plan. Um, and we're looking for um, we're looking to ARPA fund funding to try to do some of these other water plants um, and capital. So that's good news for us to to you know not burden the the rate users with any kind of um, additional capital needs. So. Oh, thank you. Mm -hmm. Thanks, Frank. Any other questions? Well, I, I like to entertain the motion to approve the, the power of water. So clean water is so, such a critical thing. So motion to approve. Second. Reagan MJ, thank you. Eric. Aye. Julie. Aye. MJ. Aye. Rig. Aye. Lee. Aye. Steve. Aye. Brian. Aye. Thank you. The motion was approved. Excellent. All right. The next order of business is oh, FY230063, which is a transfer order for the CPA transfer to the Memorial Building Capital Fund project fund. Um, they'll be taking $95,000 from the CPA historic uh, re reserves. Um, and funding the Memorial Capital Project with those funds, which for those of you who who um, were unclear with the uh, CPA, it, it is specifically earmarked for certain things within the town. Um, repairing historical buildings is one of those things. Um, we all pay into it via our tax bill. Um, and Lori, I will ask you just real quickly for the balance of the uh, CPA fund, if you, if you have it handy. The total, I just did the um, the reporting on the CPA. There's like $4 million actually in the special revenue fund, which is great. Um, you know, a lot of the, it's about 2.5 of this is already um, reserved for special projects going around going on already in town. Um, there's, let me see, there's about 282,000 available in the historic reserves account, which is where this uh, money is being transferred from. Okay. So. And that would leave us with about 1.5 of. Yeah, I the, the committee does a really good job about um, being very selective and Looking at every all these projects really carefully, and they they've worked um, together with the town manager to complete this memorial building project. So, any questions for Lori on the transfer? No question. Do I have a motion? Motion to approve. Second. Thank you, Lee. Eric. Aye. Julie. Aye. Josh, I think you're freezing. Definitely frozen. Uh -oh. That's a good look, though. <laughs> Looks intense. We do serious work here. That's right. <laughs> so my Josh, sister. you may want to turn off your uh, video and see if you can hear us. But I'll just, I'll just, while Josh is regrouping, um, I'll go around the 
obviously I said I. I heard Julie say I. MJ, I'll go to you. I. Stephen. I. Rig. I. Lee. I. Brian. I. Unanimous motion passes. Josh, half a second. Josh, can you hear us? Yeah, I can hear you guys. Okay. That that passed. I, I I did the roll call. Josh did the. Uh, everybody voted yes. Okay, great. Thank you. You're welcome. All right. Moving on to our last piece of business for tonight is FY23064, which is the ratification of a 2% cost of living increase for the retirement benefits. Um, moving it from 3% to 5%, uh, which has the impact of roughly $16,000 based on what I'm reading here. But Lori, I will ask you to uh, just walk us through this one if you don't mind. Yeah, sure. I actually just saw this because I didn't even know it was in the council. Um, but this is kind of common, so but we haven't had it in a while. Um, so when the when the Plymouth County Retirement Association sent the town a letter and asked us to accept this provision that was signed by the governor. I think it's in the I think it's in the documentation. It's chapter 269, an act relative to the cost of living adjustments for retirees. So what that really means is um, it doesn't, it's not a cost of living on a, someone's entire pension, but it's a cost of living increase in this case on the first $16,000. So if, if you get $50,000, the cost of living is only on the first um, 16,000. So, I mean, I think it used to be 12,000. So they kind of, you know, putting it up and, you know, just to keep up with inflation and, um, you know, all the other colas have gone up for almost every everything else, but the pension on some of these retirees who do, you know, some of them don't make a lot at all. So this helps them a little bit, but it's really not a lot. Do you actually have the impact to the town, Lori? Out of just out of I actually, I don't, um, but it is, they did provide, um, I was looking through this like before the meet the, this afternoon, um, and it's like, so when they, when our pension assessment comes out, so that's factored into the town's pension assessment. And if you saw the FY24 budget already, it was like, I don't know, 9% increase already. Um, so I'm just looking at this cost added. Mm -hmm. I think... You know, I don't, I don't actually know, so I don't want to even take a guess. Is it but... something we have to vote on, not to interrupt, but is it something we have to vote on tonight, or is it something we could get that answer to before we vote on it? Um, like, is it going to hold anything up if we don't vote on it tonight? I don't think so. I don't know if it has. Yeah, actually, it does have to be voted before July 1. Um, so, yeah, I don't have the impact cost, though. Again, I, I just saw this today. I didn't even realize it was on your packet, so I apologize. Kim might have had some info on it, or I know Michael probably did, but um, of course he's not here to answer for it. So it, this just came out. I didn't even I didn't know anything about it until I saw the packet today. Julie, I'll, I'll just say if if the if the committee is not comfortable voting it, I think we ask for some additional information and ask. Uh, I think it's Councilman Moore that actually proposed this, if I looked at that right. Um, potentially asking Mr. Moore or uh, Tony or Michael for a little additional information. Um, completely up to the committee, obviously. But uh, right. I mean, others might be, but. Yeah, if you're not comfortable, you're not comfortable. So, right. so if I had to vote, I would vote no as of, right now, as of now without knowing that information. <clears throat> but that's up to everybody else. <clears throat> Not that I want to force anyone to have another meeting to get it approved by July 1st either. I mean, what happens if you don't vote for it? I guess, I mean, if it did get voted down, what would what would that mean? What does that mean that we're going get, because in one breath, 
you said it was common, but then in the next breath it says we, we haven't done it in a while. So I'm a little bit confused by that statement as well. Well, it's, um, sorry, I keep forgetting to no, say No, I know, it's you, not your fault that people should no. be at this meeting. That, yeah, no, you. so it's been 3% for the last 20 years. Um, and so this has gone up now to 5%, meaning on the first 16,000. So um, I, honestly, I, I don't know the cost of it all, but I, I think that, again, it affects morally, mo mostly the um, retirees who are, are just living paycheck to paycheck. I don't think it has a big effect on the other ones, but... Um, but, this but once we vote on it once, it's it's a permanent 5%, right? It's not like it's mm -hmm. going to go down. And as the retirees increase, it may have an impact later, right? Well, it'll have an impact, I think, in fiscal 25, which is what was attached to the documentation. Um, as PEREC is the state board, so they determine the rates. Um, and then the county, the Plymouth County works into into the um from what the state says and then you know the the towns have to accept the local options so this is you know totally you know a bridgewater thing if you didn't want to accept the the five percent then everyone stays at three percent but if it's not voted by july one I, I think that that's how it is it'll have to wait till the next year i think this goes back to the question of impact like how many people exactly would be mm -hmm. affected um, by this and how what would this be retroactive for i don't know re retirees who's been retired for over 10 years or is this newly retirees um, no, this is for the it starts this july 1st so so if so, someone's cola would normally go up three percent but the cola on the first sixteen thousand goes up to five percent so but we don't have a core, a, a, a core number of it's going to affect, I don't know, 5,000 retirees or. Yeah. Um, yeah. I don't have that number. So I'm sorry. But if you need it by June 1st, so we have, we would have another meeting potentially in two weeks, but that would not be in time for the town council or it would be in time for the town council next council meeting. Yeah. Like, the council is Tuesday. Yeah. I thought I saw something on here about Bridgewater, but I thought they attached the. Um, yeah, I'm kind of confused as well. But I don't. Must have been printed off. I guess my question for that would be if it. I know it's a, it's a rush now, but like the memorandum on this is dated. November 18, 2022. So why is it just coming before us now? Well, that went to the like retirement board. Right. Yeah, no, that went to the retirement board. And then the council chairman just got a letter dated May 31st. So okay. um, yeah, that's yeah. why I didn't even know about it. Michael must have got it right on the council for, but I, I didn't even actually talk to him about it. So mm -hmm. I apologize. No, so not I, think, your fault. I think it really boils down to knowing what it is. I mean, it's a $320 difference mm -hmm. uh, per year per person. So, I mean, if you're talking 500 people, it's 160 grand. If you're talking 5,000 people, it's 1.6 million. So, I mean, it could be a, a big difference depending on how many how people. Many retirees. Yeah. yeah. Um, I must have some kind of retiree. I mean, look, looking at it just from the perspective of just for the town of Bridgewater, I, I would think we're probably closer to the one, you know, closer to the 500 employees than we would be 5,000 employees. I mean, on average, this town has about, what, 120, 130 employees. So if you do retiree okay. calculation, yeah. it's probably 10% of that. Mm -hmm. yeah. yeah. And plus, on average, I mean, at, when you look at it and taking this as a I'm going to put on my I'm going to put on my public servants hat in this one in regard and advocate for it when we're looking at the pensions for a public employee they're not really getting a lot of money when it comes to their pensions in the grand scheme of things it you know that three hundred dollar three hundred dollars um rightfully actually does go a very long way 
um, especially since the vast majority of us have been in service for, in some cases, 20, 30, 40 years and never had a job that had social security. Um, I know I only, in my public service career, just as, as an example, I've been in public service for 17 years, but I've only had five years of social security. When I retire, social security is going to affect my overall pension. And I actually will have a reduction more so in my pension because I have social security that I would, they would check that against. I would say in the grand scheme of it, that $320 for the retirees even those that are retiring later in age, that $320 makes a big difference. So the three to 5% difference is from a long-term perspective, much more beneficial. It may, it may affect us further down the line, but at that point, we're already starting to contribute more to our OPEB system. And we can still, we can deflect some of that cost. But as it relates to an employee who was retired, I would say that, and I'm just saying this as, a, as an employee who has worked in the public sector, it means a lot because a lot of us do not get a lot of a pension. Those who are getting big pensions are those who have been in managerial fields for a very long time, and those are usually far few and in between. It's usually the lower level employees that really, really depend on this, and that's your administrative assistants, your um, part-time employees, your full-time employees, but that couldn't necessarily do a deferred comp account and can't go back to work. Some of us do go back to the private sector, but you know, you're looking at somebody who may be in their 50s or 60s. It's it's not the it's not the impression of it being something to do. It's the right thing to do in this regard. And I myself would say it would benefit the town. And it would also show, it would go a long way to providing some level of comfort to our retirees, paying back to them what they gave us for, in some cases, decades of service. I, I, I'd like to say something. I, you know, thank you so much for, um, for using yourself as an example, MJ. Um, certainly, as I, as I heard you speak, and certainly, you know, my thought process around you know, the impact of inflation and in those that are living on, on extreme fixed income. Um, you know, I'm certainly, you know, me personally, I'm certainly leaning towards um, entertaining a vote tonight. But I, I do want to say, though, that if this has been sitting on someone's desk since November, um, and the fact that we're just now getting it when there's a vote, you know, when they need a vote by by July 1st, that's unfair to this committee. Um, and, and I would certainly want to go on record to say, you know, um, I, I would hope that that's not a strategy. And I would hope that, you know, um, that, that, that decisions that need to be made in terms of increasing whatever, whatever finan financial endeavors uh, for the town or, or for, um, you know, for uh, retirement or whatever, I would hope that moving forward that, you know, uh, decisions that need to be made within this group, you know, that we would be given ample of time so that we can review it, ask questions if we need to go back. Uh, so I certainly hear what you're saying, MJ, and, and I also hear what um, what Julie, you know, Julie's hesitation, and, and I don't want to speak for you, Julie, but um, but I can hear the uh, the hesitation as well. Um, so I just want to put that out there um, and, and be clear, at least at least in my in my thought process. Yeah, I'd say Rig, I I kind of in the same boat, right? Like I hear everything MJ said and basically agree with it, but without having a number to put against it, I'd have a really hard time just rubber stamping it. Yeah. So you know, my my thoughts are if if we can't meet before Tuesday to get a vote on this, then, uh, you know, then it's something that I think is important for us to push through tonight. You know, you're talking about, I understand we don't have the numbers and understand the impact, but you are talking about, uh, you know, people that are on a fixed income 
and it's not 1.6 million. You know, it, it's it's going to be a lesser number than that. And I would be, I would take the risk in approving it uh, as opposed to not having it go through and having those people not receive that money. So, Mr. Chairman, can I just say, um, yep. I went and uh, looked up our last, um, last July's pension assessment and there were 213 retirees on, on from Bridgewater. So that's, that's approximately the number. Just under 70,000 then? Yes. I'm, I'm sorry. I, 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 I didn't catch anything you said because oh. it's frozen. You are frozen. Everybody was frozen. Oh, sorry. There's 213 retirees in Bridgewater. Then I said it would be just under $70,000 then. Yep. Th thankfully. Uh, thank you, so Laura. I, I, I did get a little bit more from, from President Moore. Um, who is telling me that it was presented to on council as a requirement from Plymouth County. Um, and the last time it happened was before Michael was even town manager. So that was many years ago. Um, and if they don't, they either voted or don't vote it. Uh, he has no idea which way it will go. Um, at the next town council meeting, which is next Tuesday. So didn't give me any more than that, but I'll, I'll certainly share what he what he sent along as I tried to ping him and get a little bit more information for the team. I mean, I, I'm comfortable making a motion to approve it knowing the area of the number, so. Yeah, I second that. Okay, Lee has uh, made a motion, Josh. Can you hear us, Josh, still? Yep. Can you guys hear me okay? Yep. Yes. And Brian seconded it, Josh. So. Yep. Got that. All right, Eric. Aye. Julie. Yeah. Aye. MJ. Aye. Rig. Aye. Lee. Aye. Steve. Aye. Brian. Aye. Thank you. The motion was approved. Fantastic. All right, so that leaves us with, um, I apologize, I gotta go back up to the agenda. I don't have it in front of me. Um, that leaves us with additional items for discussion. Does anybody have any additional items for discussion? MJ, I, I do, Mr. You... Chairman. Yep, go ahead, MJ. So I do wanna share with the committee in whole that we have heard back from part of our records request for information for the capital expenditure and finance policy uh, subcommittee. Uh, we did hear back from my request that I sent to uh, the uh, public records officer, uh, Ms. McDougall at Bridgewater Rainham Regional School District. I have asked that Mr. McGraw distribute the material that we received to members of the subcommittee. And I'm hoping to have a meeting scheduled for next Tuesday at 7.30, um, since uh, you are on the committee and uh, Mr. Noel is on the committee. I'm hoping that I might be able to hold your all the speech to the fire tonight and see if you can attend next Tuesday because I'd like to get it posted and maybe we can discuss it a little bit more in detail what we got from BR. Um, but as, as it relates to the other materials, Josh has informed me that we are still gathering material from the town of Bridgewater with which to discuss that portion of it. So even though we don't have everything that we need right now, I want folks to read it and you know understand what we're seeing on the school district side of it. And then once we get the material from, from the town side of it, we can better put together that policy that we're looking to do in general for a capital expenditure policy that would be uh, a holistic approach for both town and school, not just one size fits all just for one thing. I'm hopeful we'll get that in the near term. Um, if I may, through you, Mr. Chair, uh, Josh, do we have anything yet from the town? Um, nope, but I can double check tomorrow. Fantastic. That's all I needed to hear. And um, Ray, uh, Eric, would you be able to attend next Tuesday if we can get something scheduled? Yes, I can make next Tuesday work. Excellent. Eric? Um, I, I am supposed to travel, MJ. Okay. Um, but I will make, what, what, what we land on, 7, 7.30? I 
I believe we were doing 7:30. Yeah, I'll I'll uh, I'll make myself available. I can't I I can't commit to too much time, but I will I will make it so that we can get the subcommittee together. Yes, yeah. absolutely. I, I would think based upon the information that we got from Bridgewater Rainham, it probably wouldn't take more than 20 25 minutes tops. That's fair. And then we can schedule for a later time for a more in-depth conversation. Okay. Awesome. So Josh, having that been said, um, if you can make sure that that make that magic happen, I'd greatly appreciate it. Yep, I'll get everything posted tomorrow. Cool beans. Thank you. And then um, I I also have um, so I just want to give you the heads up, Eric, and everybody else. I'm going to be traveling the week of the 26. Um, and, um, I, I won't be back until the week of the 10th. Okay. My, my guess is, and, and uh, somebody on the phone may even know this. If town council is meeting tomorrow, right. They wouldn't meet again until the 11th at the earliest. Uh, they meet in the 20th, I think. Of July, because they only have one meeting oh, in July. July I think. Yeah. yeah, I think they only have one meeting in July, one in August. If I'm, oh, if July twentieth yeah. is a Thursday, so do they yeah. don't normally meet on Thursdays, right? Yeah, that's weird. Do you mean oh. June twentieth, which is a Tuesday? That would be back to back Tuesdays. They're meeting next Tuesday, which um, is the June twentieth. Oh, no, 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 maybe they're maybe meeting the uh, next Tuesday. Yeah, next Tuesday would be the 20th. The 20th, correct. Yeah, that, that's their next meeting. But then I think there's only one in July and one in August. Historically, they only meet once in, in July and once in August, I believe. Yeah, they don't have it set yet. Doesn't look like. But yeah, usually it's once in July and once in August. Yeah. So I, I guess I bring that up as coming out of the 20th, the earliest we would get together is probably the, what, what would that be? I can't, I can't do math right now. Um, keep me honest, to be the 10th of July would be the Monday or the 11th would be the Tuesday, right? The 11th yes. is the Tuesday. That would be the earliest we would meet is the, is the 10th. So I, I think we'd be fine with that because nobody's gonna meet the week of July 4th. I don't think we'll, we'll be able to get a quorum anyway. And we won't have any new business next week. So it's. So enjoy um, your time, Rig. <laughs> That's what we say. Yeah. Yes, uh, <laughs> I, I need some, a little bit of R&R. &R. <laughs> so I'll, I'll get with Nate and figure out our next meeting. But the earliest it would be is, is July 10th, if, if my math is right. I think, I think you guys helped me out there. So. That's yeah, I'm, I don't yep. foresee any financial um, things coming going in next week but you never know <laughs> is, is tony i mean you've been to the last few meetings is he planning on attending meetings soon any with it if there are financial ones or not that you didn't do a great job because we definitely appreciate you being here but i was asked yeah. today if he's been to a couple and i said well i've missed a couple because they've been rescheduled but he has not been at the ones i've been in attendance if it wasn't at the last yeah one. he's he's actually on a leave so he's okay not didn't know available. so I, I hope everything's okay then Okay, yeah. thanks. Thank you. I have a quick question uh, for Lori. Lori, you said that uh, in passing, there's a master plan that uh, is going to start this fall. Is that so? The comprehensive plan for the town of Bridgewater, that process is going to be in this fall, or? Well, I think that master plan is is ongoing. I I was um, referring to the the capital water, for the water, water and sewer. Yeah. Um, will be presented uh, this fall. Oh, yeah. Okay. Thanks. Mm -hmm. Sure. Does anybody else have anything else for tonight? I have a motion to adjourn. Second. Josh. Eric. Hi. Julie. Aye. Rig. MJ. Aye. <laughs>
rig i <laughs> we i <laughs> ian i and steven i motions adjourned meeting is adjourned at 8 26. thank you all for your time thank all you everyone have a good fourth of july no, no see you, you next tuesday eric